Hey everybody, Dr. Strong here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've got a unique topic that we're going to be discussing today. It's actually about poop, fecal transplants, obesity, autism, and diabetes, and how all of these correlate with one another. We're going to be diving deep into the research that has come along with fecal transplants and how they're using it to cure these chronic conditions, and how you can apply this to your own health, whether you have diabetes, or if you know somebody who has a child with autism, or if you're struggling with obesity, we're gonna dive in just how important the gut microbiome is. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share my channel. It really helps me reach more people, and it's my mission to help as many people as possible overcome their chronic health conditions so that they can have the highest quality of life as possible. So thank you again for your support. Let's get started and dive into this topic today. Now, when it comes to fecal transplants, most people have that yuck factor that comes into it. However, to be quite honest, my research has shown this procedure to have very promising results. A fecal transplant is when a doctor transplants feces from a healthy donor into a person to restore the balance of bacteria in their gut. And if you've seen my channel, you know just how important gut health is. A lot of the times when I'm working with people and reversing their chronic conditions, the gut is always where we start. Now, there is a free resource below if you want to try a ketogenic diet. It's very good for your gut, and you can get that below in the description. So check that out as well. Fecal transplants may help treat gastrointestinal infections and other conditions is what they've used them for in the past. Fecal transplantation is the insertion of stool from someone with a healthy system into the intestine of someone who is ill or unwell. Other names for fecal transplant include bacterial therapy and fecal microbiota transplantation. Okay, I know that's a mouthful. But doctors primarily use fecal transplants to treat C. difficile associated disease or CDAD. In the United States, CDAD kills about 15,000 people. The overall cure rate was 90% among those who underwent multiple treatments. When it comes to fecal transplants and autism, research has shown that many kids with autism have gastrointestinal problems, and some studies have found that those children also have worse autism-related symptoms. If you know a child, or maybe your own child, has any type of behavioral issues, I've seen this in the past that restoring their gut microbiome and really working on their gut microbiome, really changing up their diet, even though it may be hard, has shown profound effects when it comes to helping kids with these ADD, oppositional defiant disorder, or any type of behavioral issues. According to the studies performed by Kremnilek and Brown, when you are able to treat those gastrointestinal problems, their behavior improves. At the Center for Digestive Diseases in Sydney, researcher Barodi has stated that fecal transplants is a world first discovery. He continues to state that when we treated the gut bacteria in these children with autism during our clinical trial two years ago to reset their microbiome with fecal matter transplant, positive results are still continuing to be improving two years from the original treatments. So even though they did these treatments two years ago, they're still seeing improvements in those children that they helped. In a paper published in 2020 in China, they discovered growing evidence indicating that the gut microbiota plays an indispensable role in type two diabetes mellitus, which progresses via multiple mechanisms, mostly it's through blood sugar control. The paper further concludes that despite existence of multiple challenges and obstacles, Appropriately administered fecal transplants is believed to be a boon for individuals with type 2 diabetes mellitus. Using these fecal transplants, they saw promising evidence that this could actually control their diabetes. When it comes to fecal transplants and obesity, certain microbes in our guts determine our ability to become and or stay lean or not. By using fecal matter transplantation, we can manipulate our microbiome to look more like that of a fence person. By inserting the microbes more prominent in lean individuals gut into an obese gut, the microbes will encourage more effective weight loss. This is pretty cool and this just shows us how important our gut microbiome is in order to restore health, reverse chronic disease, even weight loss. 
The legitimacy of this practice has been demonstrated in a proof of concept my study, along with anecdotal cases being reported. There are a handful of human studies underway exploring the connection between gut microbiota and obesity. If you haven't seen my video over candida and excess sugar cravings, go check that out. That is something that I find a lot of people actually struggle with. So if you're constantly craving sugar, if you have a white coated tongue, if you have an itchy genital area or rashes on your skin, you may want to look into candida because that can be a big cause of why you're not getting to where you want to go on your health journey. Now, I've read several clinical papers and the conclusions have been mixed, but more research is needed on this obesity factor when it comes to the microbiome. In my personal clinical experience, every time we have reset somebody's gut microbiota, they have lost at least 15 to 20 pounds and they are able to keep it off. Now, sometimes we had to do candida kill-offs because they were constantly craving sugar. So that is a hidden factor when it comes to really resolving the obesity problem. I just released a video about heavy metals as well. So check that out because you may want to do some heavy metal toxicity tests if you're still struggling, if you've done candida, if you feel like you've done everything, then heavy metals definitely could be the cause. In other studies, fecal transplants and other conditions, there are preliminary reports that the use of this therapy in a wide range of disorders, including Parkinson's disease, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, myoclonus dystonia, multiple sclerosis, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, depression, fatty liver, hay fever, arthritis, asthma, eczema, anxiety, and even cancer. So they are trying to use this for a variety of different chronic diseases. Now, do you have to get somebody's poop placed in you? That's the big question I'm sure you're asking. And the answer is no, you don't, but you have to take the right steps to reset your gut microbiome. The best way to do that is to start with your diet, and then you can start adding back in the pre and probiotics after you do a kill off program is what I recommend. In a paper published in 2019, in, it concludes that the role of the intestinal microbiota and its relationship to carcinogenesis or cancer formation provide an unprecedented opportunity to explore new diagnostic and therapeutic applications for cancer. So they're looking at doing this for cancer. Strategically, fecal matter transplantation is the most direct method to change the composition of gut microbiota. So you can go down the route of doing a kill off and resetting it, but doing a fecal transplant is the fastest way to do it. There are case reports and series reveal the potential of fecal matter transplantation in alleviating various cancers linked to intestinal dysbiosis and cancer treatment associated complications. You may be wondering, how much does a fecal transplant cost? Fecal microbiota transplant procedures can cost anywhere between $600 and $1,000 depending on the treatment method, location, insurance coverage, and other factors. This price usually covers both the stool material used in the procedure, but in certain cases, the two are considered separate cost by insurance plans when you're talking about the actual fecal matter and the procedure. So they may cover one, but they may not cover both. Another question you may have is, who does fecal microbiota transplantation? Unfortunately, at this time, from my review of the literature, it indicates that the medical establishment will only approve this procedure for Clostridios difficile infections, so C. diff infections. If you want to determine if fecal matter transplantation can help with other conditions listed above, then you need to be accepted as part of a clinical trial. You can search for trials at www.clinicaltrials.gov. Now, if you want to deal with the government, you can do that, but that's really the only way that you can get in to try this and see if it will help. So that is an option, but you can also, like I said, look at just doing a complete wipe of your microbiota and then restoring it. I'll recommend that you get a health coach or a doctor who really knows what they're talking about when it comes to this. To wrap things up, we can just see how important our gut microbiome is to our health and then reversing these chronic conditions. Whether it's the chicken or the egg, we don't really know. But what we know is that a healthy gut microbiome means a healthy you. And whether you're trying to reverse a chronic condition or you're trying to just stay healthy and prevent chronic 
conditions from developing, your gut microbiome is a great place to start. Now, you don't have to get a fecal matter transplant to do this. There are certain ways. I have videos that show you how to restore your gut microbiome. So just go to my channel, check it out, make sure that you subscribe. I'm gonna be posting more videos about this particular topic as we go, because I think it's so important because I see so many people who are affected by sugar cravings due to candida, they have parasites, they have intestinal dysbiosis, which just causes them to crave sugar. And these microbes actually influence the way that you think and the way that you eat. And by changing your gut microbiome, we can actually change the cravings that you have, the thoughts that you have, and control your health, which is very cool. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Share this with your friends or family. I really appreciate all of your support and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.